hi manish uh, good evening and uh, thanks a ton for joining us on this on the next uh, part of our going digital series it's an absolute privilege to have you on board for this discussion today as you know there are a lot of people just hankering and waiting for what's going to come out of this discussion so really it's a <laughs> it's a privilege to have you here today uh, so a lot of questions a lot of people have sent questions some questions which we thought of asking you to sure. you know, kind of uh, capture some of your expertise uh, you know i'll start with a very basic open ended question that uh, everyone talks about a digital business so uh, you know in your opinion what are the key elements of a digital business as differentiated from the ordinary you know physical business brick and mortar business your thought on that so so first of all uh, thanks adab for giving the opportunity to speak and sharing some open ended thoughts around topics related to business digital physical uh, mash up of those uh, etc um, so thanks for the opportunity uh, when one looks at uh, you know traditional business you know before you de- define what digital business is let's look at traditional business you know traditional business is typically brick and mortar physical inventory uh, physical products or people delivering physical services to people and essentially delivering them in environments that are essentially physical in nature whether it's an in store experience or in uh, in premise experience in customers home um, or on a third party venue let's say in a shopping mall it's all about uh, a physical space a physical person and essentially a product or a service that is delivered by human beings in some sense of the word um and obviously there is the traditional shipping from where it is manufactured uh, etc which is involved uh, involved in this business a digital business um, a purely digital business let's define what is purely digital is where the entire product or service itself is 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 a physically digital product in that sense of the word there is no physical product there is no uh, touch and feel uh, and uh, it is delivered maybe by human beings but by uh, delivering it in a physical uh, in a non physical surrounding which means either online or or uh, you know in a manner in which uh, you know without the physical presence of either the recipient or the person delivering that product or service uh, being present physically in the same location uh, yes essentially in that sense of word and uh, in most cases or not it is powered by within the company an entire set of digital processes or processes that are uh, you know by and large uh, you know digital in nature and uh, most of what we would call manufacturing has also been done in a digital form but i would say almost very very few businesses in the world would be purely digital maybe consulting as uh, as you know it uh, go push consulting could be a purely digital business because you have people and then they deliver you know digital help uh, they 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 deliver the help or consulting experience through digital media and have very little physical contact in that sense of the word but most businesses will have some sort of mix between physical people products and services being delivered over digital i would say those are the businesses where uh, physical products or physical people use digital mechanisms or digital technology to deliver the product and service very differently uh, or in a different environment than a physical space so it could be a physical space but a digital experience in that physical space or it could be an entirely phys- digital space where you are getting a purely digital experience but the product could be eventually shipped to the customer uh, which is very physical in nature uh, take for example um, you know if you're buying online let's say you're buying glasses uh, you could essentially get your tie- eyes tested online uh, figure out uh, what kind of uh, correction you require uh, digitally uh and then you could even select a pair of uh, you know eyewear etc online and then the company manufactures it in a physical location obviously the product is physical in nature and they ship it 
to your residence uh, and you then obviously you are able to track where the product is how when it will get delivered all of that information is del- delivered over a digital sort of digital processes you pay for it digitally and finally you are able to take the physical product and actually wear it uh, i would call this to be more the norm uh, than the exception in even some of the newest businesses that are digital in nature uh, so even the most uh, what shall you say talked about digital business tesla uh, the product is a physical product it's a car in which you and me you and i can sit but the entire manner in which that car, customer experiences within the car is highly led by digital technology uh, in that sense word in the way they manufacture the car uh, it's a digital in the way the you know the entire artificial intelligence that powers the car uh, it has a lot of digital element into it in that sense of the word and obviously in the way they thought about the process in the way they design the car the kind of testing that has been done on the car a lot of it is digital a lot of it is also physical uh, because the world has not yet sort of devised mechanisms to put vehicles on the roads which are perfectly safe without a physical test in some sense of the word so i would say um, if you are a traditional business in today's world probably answering the next question that you would ask as to will traditional businesses survive i would say that if you are a traditional business uh, thinking about only being traditional in that sense of the word it's going to be a pretty hard world for you to survive in and so most businesses in some shape and form will have to adapt uh, to some form of digital uh, i mean for lack of better words i said you know powered by digital uh, if you want to survive into the future in that sense of word lovely so maybe a few years down the line i can't imagine seeing a only physical or only traditional business in that sense of word lovely so uh, manish uh, you know uh, you spoke about a digital business so is there a process that a physical business you know needs to take their company digital is there a recommended process that you might like to share with us let's look at a a, a traditional company which has uh, which wants to compete or wants to transform itself to compete in the new age i think what my first advice to them would be a i think go back to first principles uh, put the customer at the center of all of this and think about what you deliver to that customer okay and uh, maybe the first question the company should ask is hey how well are we doing at that you know so kind of put some metrics uh, and obviously they'll be different for different companies and uh, figure out how well you are doing what is working for you and what is not working for you or what you could be doing better off and then kind of go back to your principle go back to it and say hey can your product or should your product change first of all in this these kind of transformations in many cases the product or the service itself that you are going to offer to the consumer might be radically getting impacted by digital revolution uh let's take for example for the company that i know well which is asian paints yes we uh, are dealing in a physical product we sell coatings um uh, to customers uh, but at the same time we have in visions of impacting decor and uh, we are offering many 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 different services to consumers in the physical world in the sense of the word thus you have to go back and talk to your team and look at product stroke service innovations that could differentiate could be could be a new differentiator in the digital world in itself so i think you have to sort of come up and think from you know ground zero about these kind of things um and maybe you could go so far as to say that can you find a new competitive edge you know uh, the classic principle is do you have a competitive edge and in the digital world i guess you got to answer that question again and for many companies it would be an addition of a service it could be reconfiguration of the product but for many companies it could be an entirely new product and service that you may have to create to be able to service that same customer more take for example banks at one point of time the only form of payment banks knew was a physical check correct okay and uh, today ob- obviously we have come up with many many digital products and in many cases the banks couldn't innovate fast enough and so you have the creation of you know google pay paytm phone pay 
many of the payment intermediaries that we see today because they were nimble enough to innovate faster in terms of newer products and services that they could offer to the consumers. So I think the first point is find a new competitive edge. However, do not forget your core, which means if your consumer was what they are or your product is what, what it is, you cannot just go and say that maybe years of investment, uh, you're going to completely forget. So you have to keep that at the center. I think you want to figure out how you want to strengthen or add links that would improve the customer experience in some sense of the word. The next step is if you have to do all of those things, what should you change in the company? Uh, you know, what should you, what should you intertwine? Uh, what, what should you, let's say, keep as your innovation process? How should you bring about a set of digital thinking as you innovate on the process? Maybe in the yester worlds, we used to innovate by going back into our R&D organization, creating a product, then launching it physically in a test market, then getting feedback, then going back and doing all of these things in maybe a little bit of a longer process. Maybe in the digital world, you could shorten all of these things. Uh, sometimes you could use digital technology to get your customers to innovate with your R&D organization itself. So I think reimagine every process in this digital world where you could use the power of digital technology to maybe make it more efficient, leaner, quicker, faster, and obviously far more uh, robust uh, out there. And that's how you sort of plug in digital technology. Uh, sometimes it might not mean setting up entirely new IT systems or something like that. It just could be utilizing a digital service in some sense of the word, which you plug and play into the process. So it may not be, in some cases, very large scale transactions will have to be completely digital and transformed. In many other cases, you should be able to plug in another service to be able to take advantage of uh, digital technology. Uh, I think a lot of companies have said, you know, here is my physical process and I will pilot a digital process. Great way to experiment, but at some point of time, you got to think about a fusion of sorts because you cannot run parallel processes for too long. Obviously for trial and experimentation, it's completely okay. And in many companies, a trial and experimentation might last maybe a few months to maybe one or two years also uh, because the process is complicated there. Uh, value chain holders are more complex and change is harder. But at some point of time, from day one, you should think about what could be the potential metrics to make it a fusion process in some sense of the word. Uh, and I think to begin it all, and the foundation of all of this is to make sure that you, your leadership team or whoever you consider as your top leaders in the company, maybe it could just be the CEO and his immediate reports, or it could be even a slightly larger team that is required to make this transformation happen. Uh, every Each and every leader will have to assess their team for digital readiness of sorts. And uh, in many cases, you may have to casual people to change. In other cases, maybe more radical solutions are necessary. If they are just not capable of um, you know, managing that change, you might have to bring new people, but you will have to make sure that your leadership is firmly behind this transformation. Uh, because just like any other transformation, digital transformation, if uh, requires, you know, change and change management. So I think the best way to start change management is to have a leadership that is aligned to making this change happen. I would say that these are the steps in terms of planning. Then there is, I think, many, many things that you need to do in execution. And I think the devil is really not so much that the companies forget about this planning bit. But I think it's really in the execution piece that companies can really go wrong because they underestimate the change uh, that is necessary. They underestimate probably the investments necessary to make this happen. And last but not the least, I think you have to make sure that the domino effect sort of holds good, which means you bring in change and people adapt to that change. Then you bring in new changes and people adapt. So I think some organizations obviously will be faster at digital transmission. Some may be slightly slower and gain momentum as you go along. But I think the idea should be to match sort of the speed of change and the speed at which you can adopt things uh, to what you want to do mm -hmm. rather than 
have too much of a lag either way. Uh, if you got people who are very aggressive, like you have startups, uh, they are born sort of digital natives. They will obviously adapt much faster. Uh, traditional organization will may take some time, but it's like you know any big big car or a big truck. Once it gains momentum, uh, the 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 resistance or the friction to sort of you know go faster is less and less uh, till it becomes a new rhythm in that sense of the word. And there is somehow they also have their own sense of strengths, and those might actually come to the fore as you transform the company in some sense of the word. So I won't lament about oh I'm a startup so I can do things digitally well, and I'm a traditional company so I can't. I would say each has to leverage the strengths that they have got, and if a traditional company does, I'm sure they'll be able to come out, uh, you know, significant winners. Great. So you spoke about uh, you know this uh, leadership, right? The leadership of the organization. So what attributes in your mind do these leaders need to have to build, you know, a kind of a digital business? Is there a different mindset? Is there a different skill set that's needed to do that? So I would, I, I would first of all say, um, if you're a good leader, uh, then obviously you're a, uh, you're a good leader because you understand the people who work for you, um, and uh, you are obviously, um, pe- you know, you have strengths of authenticity uh, of some sorts where you can admit to what you are good at doing and admit to also what you are not so good at doing in some sense of the word, and be able to identify. Uh, people who can work with you in tandem in some sense of word so i think all of the physical attributes of leadership in the traditional world probably remain the same it's just that i would bring in a couple of more attributes one is the concept of agility in the digital world uh, somehow this attribute tends to go up the ladder very very quickly in some sense of the word uh, i would almost dare say that it is probably the number one attribute that you require in some sense of word because very very few people can fully sort of all the strategy in the world you're not going to sit there and work everything out for 18 months and then go and say i'm going to execute in the digital world you kind of try things out uh, and maybe you learn from it and then you adapt and you learn and adapt i think if you want to do this rapidly agility is one of those key ingredients in some sense of the word so i would say that i'd almost put a little bit more gravity around agility than um, sometimes even look at somebody who wants to mistake proof everything that you are doing in some sense word which is right. the other opposite extreme in the traditional world you would give a lot of weightage to somebody who has always proven right and knows and all of those things uh, i think everything in between uh, the second thing that you have got to think about is somebody who is customer first so i would say agile first customer first a kind of person is what you would want out there and i would say that they need to be able to think out of the box because in the digital age you will have to position yourself uh, or position the company a bit differently so these would be i think the top 3 attributes of leadership the normal attributes i understand my company i understand the business i am in all of those are you know super critical i think the reward and recognition mechanism that this person would have to adopt to would be also very different it is far more repetitive and far more uh, when i say repetitive means it's far more uh, smaller chunks you kind of don't wait to at the end of the project to go and say hey you know this is a great job done i mean this is going to be like a multitude of change so i think the leadership will adapt to a completely new rhythm in some sense of word so finally you require people who are capable of changing themselves and capable of inspiring change amongst the people that they are going to lead in some sense of the word so you need a agile leader you need a leader that's going to be willing to adapt and a people and a person who is willing to change themselves and lead change in some sense of the word uh, i think the final attribute you need is risk tolerance uh, risk tolerance okay risk tolerance. um i think the level of risk tolerance that you probably need in the digital world is going to be slightly higher just because of the rapid pace of change that all digital processes bring to the company in some sense of the word so i think you just got to have a slightly larger risk tolerance is when you are going to be willing to take 
some of the risks that are necessary to win in the digital world. That's brilliant. So there's a question that's come. I mean, some of uh, the community have come up with a few questions. So we are you uh-huh. know, asking those questions as well. So Jagdish Belwal, you might know, you know, ex CIO of Tata Motors, who now runs his uh, own JC Advisory. So he had this question that you know, if in the leadership, how do you align the leadership for these kind of initiatives, especially for those who don't understand the power of what digital can do? So any any thoughts on that? Uh, I can. I, I I mean, it's it's really hard if you put the question in that way. <laughs> Uh, in that sense of the word, because the first answer that comes is a slightly radical answer uh, in some sense of the word. Somebody who's who's absolutely dogmatic that digital is not for me uh, might have survived maybe three or five years back. Uh, today, I would find it very hard uh, to deal with a person, especially in a leadership position uh, with any sort of company, uh, forget a startup, it could be a traditional company, who would say that digital is not going to impact me or or the level of digital impact is going to be minimal. I would say that it's pretty hard for me to be able to have a conversation of alignment with that individual. Because I think you got to get to brass tacks and say, look, why has digital technology not impacted them? Uh, I'm sure they have grandchildren or children who have got impacted by digital technology and they're just pushing back uh, and saying that I don't want to be impacted by that. In most cases, these people are impacted. What they are lacking is an ability to um, sort of reconfigure themselves or adapt themselves to the new world. And their basic response is that. So I don't think that there would be a person who would not understand the impact of digital technology. But there could be people who are maybe more resistant to change and sometimes even incapable of you know, fathoming those changes. Mm. I think in these cases, uh, the best way to deal with it is to showcase some of the examples, uh, but more importantly, figure out how you can enlist what they are good at doing in that digital journey. So they may not be the digital champions, but if you could prod them on to be domain experts or subject matter experts in this digital journey, uh, they could be. So they probably the best way to tell them is to collaborate with somebody who could be their alter ego on being digitally okay. native or digitally savvy and they bring their subject matter expertise to them. So that's why I said sometimes you may not want the CEO and only his immediate reports, but you may want younger people in the team who might be their alter ego, so to speak, who have maybe not the depth of subject matter expertise that most of these guys have got, but have an ability to work with them, understand the power of these, these individuals, and you can work with them. And I'm saying, so that is not very different from what maybe some of us would have done when the ERP revolution came along Correct. or when the extended enterprise revolution came along. So I think we, we have all the technologies or all the necessary mechanism. I think we just got to find unique solutions or unique answers to these problems. Um, and and I, I think that is what is, I think the beauty of the digital world is I can try this unique thing relatively quickly compared to the whole traditional world in some sense of the world. So a partnership of sort can be tried out on a small project. And believe me, there is nothing that works like success. So if this person figures out a way to work with the younger generation or somebody who is digitally sort of more savvy than them, I think then they come and realize the power of technology. The other is for the CEO or the leadership to take on what I would think are substantial, but projects that are needed to, uh, I mean, are are relatively easier to accomplish. Um, Simply because success is probably the greatest driver of what you can do more and more. So the first few, uh, if you can sort of show a win, Low risk, low investment, quick wins kind of thing. Yeah. And so I think that is what I would think is the best. Of course, if you have a digitally savvy team and they can be all empowered to do newer things, that's, I mean, that would be the best uh, solution. But if that solution is not available for one or two membership members on the leadership team, then sort of a shadow uh, new member of that team who can work well with them who understands how well they work and what their strengths are 
can really be brought uh, along on this journey and that's the best way to work uh, on this uh, what do you want from these these leaders uh, out there first of all what you need is the need for them to recognize that the world will be a bit different uh, you know in some sense of the word i think uh, again all of these are well well thought out well written uh, you know processes of any chain management uh, you know but in this case the envisioning bit is that much more what shall you say uh, the, the box is pretty large yeah uh, the the good part about digital is that you could completely think out of the box and change your entire mindset about what you would deliver to the consumers in that sense Uh, it could be either enlarged it could be enhanced substantially in some sense of the word and so uh, i think innovation and bringing in leaders who would be innovative i think is going to be very critical uh, to to succeed in this world great